Good morning, everyone. Happy Resurrection Day to you. This is Reverend Nessie coming at you with uh, Micro Manor on Sunday, Resurrection Day. Some folks call it Easter Day. 2017, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Let us glorify God and thank Jesus for all that he's done for us. Jesus shed his blood that we should be free. And that is something that we are celebrating today, the shedding of his blood so that we could be free from sin, hell, and death and and resurrect with a new mind, a mind like Christ, become new. And when you accept Jesus Christ, you become a new creature. The Bible says you become a new creature. And we thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Father God, we come to you today in thanks, thanking you just I love to start my prayers off thanking you because you've been so good to us. Your grace and your mercy is enough for us to begin to thank you, to thank you every day. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for forgiving us, forgiving us at times that we should not be forgiven. Lord God, I place all prayer requests into your name, into your hand, and and into your lap as you sit on heavenly throne, Father God, in heavenly places. Father God, everybody that's asked for prayer, um, and you know the names that have asked, we don't necessarily have to call out the names, um, but we give them all to you. We give our families to you. We give our loved ones, our our children and our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, aunts, uncles, cousins, sons and daughters, Father God, all of our relatives, all of our loved ones, our neighbors, we lift them all up to you. Jesus, you told us when... You told us in your word to even pray for our enemies. So I do believe that means pray for everyone. We are praying for everyone. There are some people that don't know how to pray. They don't know what to say to you, and they have yet to find out that it's just a personal relationship with you. It's not complicated. So therefore, we're standing in a gap for them, lifting them up to you. Father God, use me as I preach your word today and teach your word today. Use me, Holy Spirit, because without you, it is none. It is null and void. So use me. Father God, whatever, let whatever I say today in your spirit and through your spirit touch somebody's heart, cause people all around the world to accept Jesus Christ and get saved. It's not about my personality. It's not about who I am, where I'm from, my rank, my, my, my name, my age, my title. It's not about anything but accepting Jesus Christ. You called me into the ministry years ago. I appreciate it. I'm going to do my best to draw people to Jesus with everything, every talent, every gift that you've given me. You said in your word, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And that is what I want to do. Thank you for this holiday today. Father God, even though I know a lot of people get the name wrong, they're calling it Easter, we call all of our holidays different names, and there's been paganistic uh, uh, practices brought into them, but your grace and your mercy is all that we need. Like you told the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. You look at heart. You don't look at reason. You don't look at the, you look at our hearts, and and you know that we celebrate Christmas because we love Jesus. You know that we celebrate Easter because we love Jesus. And the names and titles and everything, forgive us, Father, all for getting it wrong. Because everybody around the world to realize the truth that today is actually Resurrection Day. And Father God, use us all to do that, to spread the good news amongst the nations. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Baruch Atah Adonai. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. I want to warn everybody before I get started, prepare for communion because I'm going to do communion at the end of this, um, at the end of this session um, on Micromana. So I'm letting you know now so you can go ahead and get your crackers and get your, get your, uh, your fruit of the vine. Amen. What I will be doing today, I would like to preach from Matthew 27, and I will be starting from verse 16 and going on. I'll read it, and then I'll go through it real quick, hopefully. (laughs) So, all right. Um, 
Let's glorify God today and thank Jesus for all that he's done for us. Amen. He shed his blood that we should be free. And I love that. He shed his blood so that we should be free. Anybody that's not free has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. They're not covered by the blood of Jesus. And there's no one's fault but their own. Amen. So if you haven't accepted Jesus, I hope you, by the end of this, I hope you consider Jesus Christ as your Savior because it's so easy to say and do. Amen. God bless you. All right, I'll start reading. And I'll try to read real quick because I'm going to recap um, <clears throat> the, uh, the scriptures that I'm using. Amen. I'm starting with Matthew 27:16, and it says, and, then, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Who will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man. Notice, notice what it says, just man. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders... Notice what it says, the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude, persuaded the multitude <laughs> that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Isn't that something? In verse 21, the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. And they didn't say it that nice. And the governor said, why? What evil has he done? But they cried out more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. They hated Jesus so bad, they cursed their own children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put, him on, a, put, put on a scarlet robe on Jesus. And when they had plaited a crown, uh, plaited, I'm sorry, a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they spit upon him. And they took the reed and smote him on the head, and after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put, on his, and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to the place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of the skull, remember that, they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when, they had taste, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, of uh, the prophet, they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. That's Old Testament. It's also written in the Old Testament. Verse 36, And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head an accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroys the temple and buildest it in three days, save yourself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him, with the scribes and elders said, the chief priests mocking him, uh, with the scribes and the elders, he saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. 
The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama samasali. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that thought that he was calling for Elijah. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and then put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let us, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Elias being Elijah will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of uh, Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered, and when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir... We remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. Amen. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto him, ye have a watch. Go your way. Make sure. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, feeling it, feeling the stone and setting a watch. They wanted to make sure that nobody could say Jesus rose. They, they, they fixed his grave. They fixed the tomb so that he wouldn't be able to get out. At least they thought they were. Amen. Amen. Uh, and notice also, as I was reading, uh, let's see, and Joseph, okay, verse 57, and when the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph who wanted Jesus' body so he can uh, bury it properly, prepare it for burial. Jesus not only See, this is a mistake a lot of preachers make. They say that you have to be poor to be a Christian. No. Joseph was rich. He was a rich man, and he loved Jesus. He was, the Bible says he was a disciple of Jesus. Amen. So, yes, rich people can go to heaven too. <laughs> All right? Amen. Now, I'm starting from verse 16. Okay, verse 16 says, And they had a notable prisoner called Barabbas. And, and Pilate wanted to know if they wanted to let go of Jesus, the Christ, or Barabbas. And, and Barabbas was a killer. He was very mean, um, indignant. He was, he was nasty. He was a killer, a murderer. And, and they chose, it's hard to believe these people chose someone like that over Jesus. And to this day, people still do, when you think about it. Think about our world and, and the things that are happening around us every day. You, 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 uh, you, can hear, you hear stories about it. You see it on the news. You see it on TV. Um, you, you read in the paper, magazines, where they're just mean, nasty people um, who are anti-Christ, have an anti-Christ spirit in them. And people still choose them over Jesus. They still want to go with evil people, evil ones, 
They want to cling, they want to cling to evil instead of just being free with Jesus. Now, in verse 17, Pilate gave him a chance, and they chose a killer over a savior, which goes to show that these people were spiritually blind. They couldn't see who and what Jesus was. They killed their own savior. They killed their own savior. There's a story of a man um, who was in a really bad uh, hurricane. There was a bad hurricane and a flood and everything coming, and and the water, the flood waters were coming. And so um, he said, Lord, help me, help me. I need help. I can't get out of here. So, you know, uh, God sent him a boat. He refused the boat. He said, help me, help me. I, I, I can't get out. He, when the boat came, he didn't want the boat. He said, no, I, I, don't, want, I don't want to go by boat. He said, I, I, don't want, I don't need you. So he asked God again, God, help me, help me. I, I don't want to die. Help me. The flood's coming. The waters are getting higher. So God sent him a helicopter. Okay? And he said, he, I don't like helicopters. I don't want to go on that helicopter. No, I don't want you. So he refused the helicopter. Okay? And so the waters came up higher and higher, and the next thing you know, he's standing on the roof, and he, he can't. There's nothing else he can do. The waters got so high, the man drowned and died. Okay, so the man, you went to heaven and asked God, he said, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a great white throne judgment. He asked God, he said, I asked you to help me. Why didn't you help me when that flood was coming? And God told him, he said, I sent the police. He said, I sent an ambulance. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. God told him, God. See, and this is what people do. God wants to save people, but they, they choose a killer. They choose the wrong thing over someone or something that can save them. Amen. They're spiritually blind. Okay, the flesh despises reparation and restoration while clinging to the law instead of grace. And this is what a lot of people do. Verse 18. Pilate knew they hated Jesus only because of envy. They envied Jesus and malice just as people do us today. People, if you're a a child of God, people will be jealous of you. They will envy you. They will have malice against you. They will work against you. As David said, people hated him without a cause. Yes, that really happens. People will hate you. The enemy will cause people to hate you without a cause. And there's also, the enemy also works like a fox. He's like, he'll have someone get angry with you over a truth, over something good that you have done that revealed their evil. See, and this is what Jesus did. He revealed evil. He got rid of evil, okay, he showed it to people, and he, and, he, and he casted it out of them. People will actually envy you and hate you because you revealed, you pulled the sheets and the covers. The word of God in you, the spirit of the Most High God that sets in you, reveals evil in other people. And what happens a lot of times is when they get angry with you, They will try to make you think that you really did something wrong when all along it was them and God called them out. Amen? And this is what happens sometimes. The flesh does not like restoration. Amen. Pilate's wife was warned in a dream to leave Jesus alone. Pilate's wife even knew that Jesus was nothing that they should be playing with, that Jesus was nothing that they could handle. And she told her husband to leave him alone. There was just something about him. Like the song Kirk Franklin sings, it's something about the name Jesus. Something about Jesus was just different. And pardon my expression, but you would have to be a fool to miss it. Isn't that what the word says? Fools. People don't believe in Jesus Christ are fools. And, and their hearts are seared. Their hearts are closed. They have closed, hard hearts, and they can't see him. They can't feel the love. Now, verse 20, corrupt priests. Okay. Now, it says the corrupt priests didn't like Jesus. 
They, well, the main reason they didn't like him is because he was, he was, watch this, he was dipping in their pockets all along. You read all about Jesus and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and on, and what he did, he dipped in their pockets. He, he turned the tables over. They were selling in the temple, and he turned the tables over, and he messed up their money. He was dipping in their pockets just like people do today. If you dip in people's pockets, they're not going to like you. Try to teach the truth on tithing and watch what happens. Watch how many pulpits you will be invited to, okay? Now, if you go back and you read Malachi chapter 2, what happens is preachers nowadays use Malachi chapter 3. In fact, let me go. <clears throat> let me go there. Malachi. And the first thing, and, and that's the first thing you've heard. I'm sure you've heard it a million times. Malachi chapter 3. Okay, where's that? Verse uh, 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you've robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, you're cursed with a curse. You're a bad person. You're cursed. Your family's cursed. Your kids are cursed. And your car is going to keep breaking down on you. Okay? <laughs> and you robbed me, God said, even this whole nation. Bring your tithes into the storehouse, and you may be meat in my house. Move me now here with for the Lord of God, God, Lord of hosts. If I will not, you know, what is the heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Okay, and what a lot of people don't realize is if you go back to chapter 2, okay, let's stop, let's stop starting at, math, at uh, Malachi 3 and go to Malachi 2. And he's speaking to the priest. He's not talking to the congregation. God is correcting the priest. It says the priests are sharply, even in my Bible it tells you that. The Thompson Chain reference or whatever Bible you use, the priests are sharply reproved for profaning the covenant given them and the people for strange marriages and treachery and so forth. And he's talking to, he said, and now, O oh, ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, if you will not lay the heart to give glory into my name, to the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you and I'll curse your blessings. Yeah, I have cursed them already because you do not lay the heart. What was happening was the, 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 the people who tithed, had cattle, they had, they had the food, they had cattle, they had the meat, and they had the produce. People who, who had produce and meat had to tithe, and they tithe mainly in food, okay? Whoever had a crop, whoever had a farm, and whoever raised cattle had to tithe. And what was happening is the people were doing what they were supposed to do. They were tithing to the priests, but the priests, weren't giving, weren't tithing the way they were supposed, they weren't handling it properly. And this is who he is correcting in Malachi 3, the priest. Amen. Amen. He's correcting the priest. And that Jesus, if you notice in the Bible, it never says anything about Jesus tithing. And you want to know why Jesus didn't tithe? Because Jesus was a carpenter. Okay? He was a carpenter. And they, they we're talking about correct priests here, all right? And that's why they didn't like Jesus, because he was dipping in their pockets, and most likely they might, they might have said something smart to him because he didn't tie it, and, and, and he felt that they should give, he, sh he should give them their money. Uh, we don't know, all right? Now, to verse 21, there's a call to decision. Christ is rejected. He's always rejected. And then verse 21 says, the governor answered and said unto him, what are the 20, which, which of these two do you want me to release, Barabbas or Jesus the Christ? Okay, there's a call to decision. He even gave them a chance to change their mind. <laughs> when, when a person hates you and they have a lot of envy for you, nothing, nothing is going to change their mind. You ever notice people always want you to be loving and forgiving, but they don't want to be loving and forgiving. They're bitter and unforgiving. And they, there are some people, I've heard some people even say, I can't stand him, I can't stand her, and nothing they do will change my mind. What they don't realize is, they just blocked their own blessings. When you get that mad at somebody that you treat them ignorantly and you talk about them like that, you just blocked your own blessings. You want God to bless you, but you can't bless somebody else. You can't forgive somebody else and start all over. Jesus did. We're talking about this now. He died on a cross. That's what he's doing. He's forgiving us and starting all over. He's allowing us to start over. Verse 22, they crucify him, crucify him. No matter what happened, crucify him. They wanted to get Jesus out of the way. Okay, they just wanted, he was too much. Jesus is too much to handle, too much for the enemy to handle, and I like that, don't you? I love that. He's too much for the enemy to handle. See, I always tell people, don't make me cry. 
Okay, you can mess with me all you want to. You could you could try to act like you don't like me. You could try to you know, put your little whatever voodoo's or curses or whatever people call yourself doing. Don't don't mess with me. Don't mess with a child of God. Don't ever mess with a child of God because whatever you do is going to bounce off of me like a mirror, bam, and come right back to you. Don't do it. You'll curse your house. You'll curse your household like they did trying to curse me. Amen. And this is what y'all need to say. Amen. Pilate wanted a reason. He just, he just wanted to read. He's like, why? And there was none given. Just crucify him, they kept saying. Your enemies will kill you if they had a chance. Hatred goes deep. Enemies, your enemies want you dead. Did you ever have strange thoughts sometimes about somebody? You ever have strange thoughts come in your mind? And you might be a little upset with somebody or maybe somebody is getting in your way or whatever. And you have a strange thought come to your mind. That's not God. This is why the Lord, you've got to cast them away. That's why the Bible says, cast those, take, take, thought, take, cap, capture those thoughts, change them, meditate, pray. Change those thoughts because they, they're like tentacles. They're like, they're like tentacles. They'll, they'll capture the whole inside of your heart. The next thing you know, you'll be a mean person. Okay, verse 24. People became furious. Tumult. It says in verse 24, there's a, there was a tumult. That means a loud, confused noise by a large mass of people. They, they got so out of hand that Pilate had to take charge, and, and he, he, so he, he washed his hands. He literally washed his hands, and he called Jesus innocent. He said, this man's hands, his blood is not going to be on my hands. And verse 25, they let his blood then. This is they cursed their own family. Let his blood be on us and our children. Is that just silly or what? That is what hatred, envy, bitterness, and malice does to you. When you hate somebody, you're that jealous of somebody, you want to continuously try to set somebody up, or you don't like somebody, you hate somebody, you try to dirty somebody's name, uh, you can call yourself revealing a person because, just because you don't like them, you're actually cursing your own family. Let his blood be on us and our children. Bitterness. That's bitterness. Hate causes you to curse your own lineage. And so Barabbas was released. Jesus was scourged. Now, what they did was when they did it, the Romans had a practice that they used. What they, what you might have heard the term cat of nine tails. Cat of nine tails. There's hooks on the end. Okay, it's like a rod with leather straps, and it has hooks on the end. So they not only just beat you with the leather straps, they're pulling your flesh with the claws on the end. They pulled Jesus' flesh so much, he looked like hamburger. They actually, they, they, they did it so badly that they say that he was, unre- the Bible says that he was unrecognizable. Amen. He was unrecognizable, which means that they be. It, it just means he looks wor- he looked worse than any movie you've ever seen. Okay, there was blood everywhere. Okay, Christ is mocked by the soldiers in the common hall. Verse twenty-seven. The soldiers were mo- mocking him. Okay, verse twenty-eight. They get watch this. They give him a scarlet robe. Okay, they put they took off his clothes. Okay, and, and gave him and whooped him and gave him a scarlet robe. Okay, and, and I don't know if a lot of people catch this, but scarlet it, the the scarlet is a is special kind of red. It's usually a sign of sin. You ever hear of the scarlet letter, a woman's scorn? Okay, um, it was a warm woolen cloth, which means he was very after they beat him and blood was coming out of him. They put a hot cloth on his body, just cooking the rest of the meat that was there. If you can only imagine, um, I, I hate to say this, but I know uh, there's a lot of people out there, a few people maybe say, that there are some people, did you ever, I hate to admit it, but I know somebody that did, did you ever leave your fish tank on too high and you come back home and the fish are dead because the water was too hot and you cooked them? Their flesh, you ever cook fish and the flesh turns, I mean the, the meat turns white he was he was just hot, bloody, okay, and and red, the scarlet, it's a sign of sin, sinful. 
they actually turned him into, they were making him look sinful to the people. They didn't even realize that it was a part of God's plan. Okay? Scarlet, blood red, brick red, cherry red, cardinal, garnet, crimson, flame, magenta, strawberry red, get this ox blood red, salmon, and if you look in Revelation chapter 17, verses 3 to 4, they're talking about the woman on a scarlet beast. And she was a whore. Okay, scarlet is um, usually a sign of whoredom. Verse 29, uh, they put a crown of thorns on Jesus. That's mockery. Christ suffered indignities. Verse 30, they spit on him, hit him on the head with a reed. They removed the scarlet robe after they did all that to him, and they put his own clothes on him to crucify him. Simon of Cyrene carried his cross. What an honor for Simon of Cyrene to carry his cross. Now, Cyrene was an ancient Greek city also named Libya. Okay, where's Libya? I'm sure a lot of you have heard it before. It's in Africa, North Africa. Simon was a black man. He was an African man. So, yes, a black man carried Jesus' cross. Amen. He came to Golgotha. In verse 33, speaking of how they came to Golgotha, which is a place of the skull, this is the place that uh, uh, people who study the Bible, okay, scholars and the, the, uh, the ministers and the priests, have been studying for years, and this is recorded that Goliath's head was in Golgotha. That's why they call it the place of the skull. If you go there and you look at it, it looks like a skull. I know Perry Stone takes people there. He travels to um, Israel, and he took them there and showed it. He showed us on TV one time. It does look like a skull. So they actually put Jesus' feet. When Jesus was crucified, his feet was on the enemy's head. Amen. Bless Jesus. Bless God. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Verse 34, they gave him vinegar mixed with gall. Something about the vinegar mixed with gall. Okay, this, it, it, it's actually a common drink of Roman soldiers. It's bitter. Like his bitterness. Or sometimes they say he had poison of serpents in it, adders. Okay? Sometimes they put water of hemlock. It's called the water of hemlock, bitter water. And some say it was light wine, rendered acid. It, and the reason that they did it takes away pain, and the Lord refused it. It takes away pain. He, for the Roman soldiers to offer this to him, to offer him something that would take away the pain, he, you can only imagine what he looked like. He didn't look like a typical human. They knew he was going through something and it would take a while before he would pass away. He, was, he, went, he literally went through agony for you. Amen. For all of us. And sometimes it was bow from an animal in it, and they used it in medicine as well. Look, look this, is how, this is how foolish the enemy is. They are offering him something that heals, okay? Now, how could you not like somebody? Look, doesn't the Bible say oil and water don't mix? You can't walk the fence. got to be on either you're on the Lord's side or not. Okay, now, do they, do they care about him, or do they hate him and want to mock him and tease him? See the, do you see the confusion? God says, the, the Bible says God is not an author of confusion. This is confusion. Now, they hated him, but they offered something to him that would heal him. And we all know nowadays vinegar is healing. People use vinegar now. They call it ACV, okay? Uh, I myself use uh, the Bragg's vinegar because it's healing. It, it, you lose weight. It's great for diabetics. It brought my, my diabetes numbers down. So, I mean, you want to try it, you know? Take a little teaspoon every now and then, amen. But I'm not saying because it worked for me, it worked for everybody else. But they're offering something, something that's healing. It's much like, okay, look, 
people, I well, wonder what it's like. I wonder what it tastes like. It's much like what our kids use today, okay? You know how they drink that drink that gives them energy, which is actually a drink mixed with bull sperm? Now, if we could drink that today and pay for it, I mean, people actually pay for that mess today. This is what they offer him. It's our norm now. Notice that things like that, bile and bull sperm and all that kind of stuff back then, okay, notice it was very nasty then, but now we pay for it. Something to think about, okay? Revelation 8.11 speaks of bitterness, wormwood, okay, bitter waters that came. We are to have bitter waters that are going to kill one-third of humans and, and some of the, um, the animals in the water, okay, the animal creatures. Wormwood, bitter water, as a sign. 35, verse 35, they crucified him and played lotto for his clothes. Now, Jesus wore a special robe with no seam. And if you look in John chapter 19, verse 23, you'll see that it was a special robe with no seam. They actually played lotto. They played lottery. Oh, it says they cast it lots that we're talking about. Okay? They have to actually cast it lots to see who was going to get his robe. If they, now, if they didn't believe, why would they want his clothes? Think about it. It's just like Pharaoh crossing the Red Sea to kill Jews, thinking that God would let him. Why do people continuously attempt to use something that they say they don't believe in? Doesn't that make sense? You don't believe in God? You don't believe in Jesus? Okay. But you want to you want to cross the Red Sea to get to God's people. You think He's going to actually allow you to do that? Okay. Do you want you want Jesus? Why do you want Jesus' clothes? And you just scourged him and spit on him and mocked him and made fun of him and made him bleed so much that water came out of his body. But you but wait, you want his robe? Why? Do you really really think you deserve his robe? Why do you want if you don't believe that he's the Son of God? Why do you want his rope? I question that. Think about it. And if anybody has an answer, get in touch with me and please let me know. Amen. You know, Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19.10. Jesus is prophecy. You know, and, and, and these people, he prophesied, he, he told everybody that all this was going to happen, and nobody believed him. Okay, you know, people prophesy for cars and, oh, you're going to get a million dollars. And you see on Facebook, you know, that you see pictures of um, money. And stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm totally, I'm going to say this, I'm totally shocked at the Christians that actually share pictures of money saying that they're going to get a million dollars at the end of the month. That is horrendous. I cannot believe they fall for that. God is our provider. Jehovah Jireh is our provider, Philippians 4.19. Okay, God provides for us. Amen. Not a picture. That that's a, those are chain letters. You you better be careful online because people are sending out chain letters left and right in different forms. You get them in the messages. You get these chain letters in the messages. Send this to you know God will bless you at the end of the week if you send this to 21 people. That's a chain letter. That's the old fashioned chain letter that we used to get in the mail. You remember any of these out there? Remember those chain letters? Watch out. And those pictures of money or it says you're going to get money. It, it, Pete, you know what we fall. As human beings down here, we fall for every little thing that shines in the corner of our eye. Amen. Verse 36, they sat and watched him. Okay, they, they literally sat and watched him. Verse, verse 37 says, the superscription says, they wrote a superscription put over his head that says, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. The enemy is mocking the Savior and still does today. I've heard so many different stories from especially loved ones, people who are close to me who don't believe Jesus, and they say Jesus was made up and Jesus is not real. And, and what they've done is, you know, the Bible says, be careful of not calling that which is good bad and calling that which is bad good. And this is what people are doing nowadays. They're actually saying that Jesus, that the Jews uh, copied off of the Egyptians and came up with Jesus. Jesus is really a Nimrod or something. I don't I forget. I, I don't try to remember all all those things. <laughs> you got to be careful who you listen to, okay? They're actually saying Jesus is, is a knockoff, a knockoff of the real God. My God, let me go back. Okay, verses 38 to 44, he was crucified with two thieves, one of which repented, and he was saved on the cross. Did anybody catch that? Saved on the cross. 
he asked Jesus to take him with him. And Jesus told him, Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. He was saved on his cross, paying for it at the same time, but going to be in paradise in a, in a, in a few blinks. Okay. That's beautiful. Amen. Verse 45, darkness came at 12 p.m., which is their sixth hour, starts at 6 a.m., um, you know, we're usually around 5 or 6 a.m. Uh, their day starts. Um, in verse uh, 46, the ninth hour, 3 p.m., Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, what, the reason why he did that is because by then he had become complete evil. I know people don't want to hear this, but think about it. It makes sense. He had become complete evil, not partial Jesus took all of our sins to the cross. He didn't take some. And, yeah, he was like seven-eighths sin and one-eighth Jesus. Wrong. Wrong. He had become complete evil and sin for you. He did it because he loves you. He didn't. I wouldn't do it. I don't know about anybody else. I wouldn't do it. Everybody would go to hell if it was me. <laughs> God, Jesus is awesome. God could not, God cannot, God is so holy and he is so righteous, he cannot dwell in anything unclean. He cannot dwell in anything unclean. God could not dwell in him along with the evil at the same time. That's why he said, Lord, why did you forsake me? Okay, the flesh calling out. You see, his flesh, he was doing a spiritual thing, but the flesh was still calling out. Jesus left his righteousness for a moment in time, just for us. He became sin, he covered it all. Prostitution, murder, lies, covetousness lasciviousness. Look in Revelations 22, uh, verse 15. You'll see the list. And Jude 4, it says, turning grace of God into lasciviousness. There are people who turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Some people, I always say this. I've, God showed it to me a few years ago, and I've been saying it ever since. There are some people who abuse God's grace. And lasciviousness, lust, wantonness, lewd, sexual desire, arousing sexual desires. Verse 47, they didn't know their word. They didn't know their word good enough to where they thought he called Elijah. They didn't know the word of God good enough. Obviously, they weren't studying because when he was saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Salafani, they thought he was calling Elijah. And that's not what he was calling. Someone offered him the vinegar again in verse 48, and he was in a, you know, he was in a bad way. And he drank it this time. If you look in John chapter 19, verse 30, he drank it. Verse 49, because at that time, it didn't matter. Everything was done. It was finished. Verse 40, verse 40 God, Jesus is so good. God is so good. Verse 49 says, they were all waiting for the return of Elijah. Okay, the spirit of Elijah, restoration. Isn't that something? Nobody, they wanted to kill the man who said he was the son of God. Okay, and they called curses upon their own households and children just to get rid of him, but they're looking for restoration. God, gimme, gimme, gimme. We have we become God gimme, gimme, gimme people, and that's exactly what's happening. Okay, verses fifty to fifty four talks about Jesus crying out with a loud voice and he died. It was finished. The temple, it says, the veil ripped apart and the earth did quake, and the saints arose. I'm going to make a point about the saints arising. Okay, I'm correction on the saint, saint people. Okay, I'm, this is a correction on the saint people. Okay, even though it sounds good, lighthearted, beautiful, fluffy, and it makes you feel good, that there are people worshiping saints who have yet to rise. Think about it. Okay, when it says the saints arose, it, think about it. It would have been those pre Jesus' death. It would have been Samuel, Nehemiah, and the likes of King David, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Jude, Paul, and Timothy. You see what I'm saying? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Jude, Paul, and Timothy are New Testament. They hadn't died yet, so how are they going to arise and be called saints? 
They didn't arise yet. Okay? The people that rose with Jesus had been dead for years. Okay? They were the ones that people worship nowadays. They're, they didn't rise yet. They're still dead. So isn't that a form of necromancy? I know the Bible says there's saints in heaven. We don't know. One day God will show us. Amen. I believe, this is my own thought, I believe the saints in heaven are the ones that arose with Jesus. Amen. And I'll end it on that. Okay, uh, since, since the centurion feared, there's a centurion that actually feared after all this happened. It turned dark, okay? And he said, truly, this was the Son of God. Even the centurion believed. And he's not the first one. All right? There was another one that watched Jesus heal his eye. Not sure it's the same one, but there was, a, I don't think, but there was another one that watched Jesus heal his child. He went home. And, and just because of his faith, Jesus healed his, his loved one. Okay, now, verse 55. Please let me hit verse 55. To all of you people who do not believe in women ministers, okay, read verse 55 of Matthew 27. All right? It it says, and many women were there beholding afar off which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. Excuse me. Am I seeing things? Matthew, I proudly say, those that don't like it will hate me saying it this way. <laughs> Matthew 27, verse 55 says, women ministered unto Jesus. It says they followed Jesus from Galilee, which means they followed him a mighty long way, okay? And you will see that also in Mark 14, 3 and on down the line. There, there were women ministers. There were men of Jesus had minister, female ministers, okay? All right, so, and they watched all this as it happened. Mary Magdalene, verse 56, Mary Magdalene, who Jesus freed up from seven devils. He cleaned her of seven devils. You can imagine how appreciative she was. You know, you can do it for her, you can do it for you. Amen? Okay? And the other Mary were there, was there also. Um, prostitutes can preach. Ding. People who were in jail can preach. Ding. So when God calls somebody to preach, don't ever second guess that. I just had somebody tell me recently that maybe I wasn't, I'm not, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. And you know what? Honestly, the what didn't hurt my feelings whatsoever. Sometimes a person will wait to put their foot in the door when the door is open because they didn't like you to start with. And and as they as they are nicely talking to you, they're also delivering a message. And that was a lie of the devil. I've been called for years now, early 90s, and I will continue to do so. Amen. God calls you to preach, you preach. And listen, the more people tell you you can't do it, get stronger. Do it even more. Practice. Amen. Practice, practice, practice. Keep preaching, 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 preaching the word of God. And if you make a mistake, God will, don't tell, don't let men tell you what mistake you made. Let God tell you. God knows the truth. Man don't know that much. He only knows, man only knows what the Holy Spirit wants to show as he gives us utterance. Whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit wants us to know. If you make a mistake, God will correct you. Trust me. Been there. Done that. Oh my. All right. Verse fifty seven to sixty, the rich man of Joseph uh, the rich man, Joseph of Arimathea, took his body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Now look how the centurions wrapped Jesus in scarlet sin, and Joseph wrapped him in clean linen cloth. Clean linen cloth, beautiful. Purity, precious. Okay? Priests were also, if you look in the early Bible, the early part of the Bible, priests are to wear linen. Priests are not supposed to wear cotton, they're supposed to wear linen. Verse 61 to 66, the two Marys were, were waiting, 
okay? They were waiting for Jesus. They were sitting there. Uh, they just, you can only imagine how broken their hearts were from all this that was happening. And nothing we have to, we have to consider. We watch movies on TV, and, and we watch little cartoons, you know, Christian cartoons and everything, and it looks like everything happened in one hour. We have to realize that when we read these stories in the Bible, okay, when we read all this in the Bible, it took years, it took months, it took days. This stuff happens it, 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 just like as we're living in, in our natural lives. Okay, all this stuff that happened to Jesus, okay, in Matthew 27, and, and, and the book of Matthew, and all these, it ha- all this stuff happened within years. Like the Israelites were in the desert. They, were, they wandered for, for 40 years. This happened for years. What have you done in the last 40 years if you're that old? Okay, have you done a page? <laughs> you know, have, have, you, have you lived one page in your, in your life's book in 40 years? No. Okay, think about it. This, it takes time for all this to happen. So Mary, the Marys are sitting there waiting for Jesus. Most people wouldn't. Now, they saw the angels, okay? They saw the angels. And the thing is, Mary turned her back on the angels. Okay, this is not my own, okay? But uh, I, I, I like how this, I'm not, they turned their back on the angels. She turned her back on the angels to look for Jesus. Most people nowadays, what would you do if you saw an angel? Oh, God, that would be awesome. It's scary, yeah, because they're not little fluffy, fat babies with a ribbon wrapped around them, okay, floating in the, in the air with curly hair and, and an arrow. You know, they're not cupid-looking things. Angels are no joke, guys. They're no, they're nothing to play with, okay? Angels are pow- powerful, Okay, the two-thirds that stay with the Lord. The one-third that left with Satan, okay? Angels are nothing to play with. She turned her back on to look for Jesus. She was, this girl was serious, okay? Most people nowadays would want to take a selfie with them and post it to Facebook, right? <laughs> so, you know... Oh, so, you know, John uh, 2016, she didn't even know him. In the book of John uh, 2016, she didn't even know who Jesus was when she did see him until he called her name. When God calls you, you will know him. And the word says she turned around and said, Rabbi, after he called her name, she knew who he was. Makes you wonder why she didn't know who he was now. Something about him changed. Okay, after he called her name, then she knew who he was. Let me ask you this question, and I end with this right now. Okay, and then we'll do communion. Do you know him? Has Jesus called your name? Think about it. Dream. In your own home, have you heard something coming from an odd place? Is not necessarily your eardrum, but something in your heart. Did you ever have anything, did you ever feel an odd feeling? Did you ever hear someone speaking to you and nobody's with you? And it's, it's not coming from your atmosphere or whatever. You'll know it when God calls you. Is he speaking to you as you read? There are some people that get called, they read a newspaper, they read the Bible, and they see something in the Bible that says, all power is given unto me. Okay, and they're like, ooh, okay, it jumps out at them, okay? Okay, and then they look at a newspaper and they see, all power is given unto me. Okay, and all of a sudden you're watching something on TV, and the commercial says, all power is given unto me. <clears throat> okay, that's how God works. He's talking to you. He wants you to remember that, that, that quote. Okay? And some people hear his voice audibly. Has God called your name? Do you know, 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 know him? Okay? Here's a better question. Have you answered? Jesus is off of the cross and out of the grave. For we worship today, we celebrate today because the Lord is risen. He's looking at you. He's listening to you. He knows your heart. He wants to teach you better things than you've ever learned before. 
He wants to take you on the right path. Some of you are looking for the right path. Some of you just seem like you're repeat offenders. You can't stop doing it wrong. He sees that. He can, he can help you with that. Allow him to help you with that. Okay? Change your life. Start new. You're allowed to. You're allowed to go where you want to go. You're allowed to be who you want to be, be what you want to be. Just be you in Christ Jesus and let him teach you how to be you in him. All you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of my sin. I accept you as my Savior and thank you for what you did for me, just for me. Thank you on the cross. Amen. And if you did that, look for a Bible-believing, tongue-talking church. Okay, I'm not talking about those that abuse it, those that sound like a, you go into church and scares you to death. I'm talking about a church that believes in, you know, uh, God having a godly language. Okay, it's not necessary for salvation, but it sure helps. And God and the Spirit of God that is now in you because you accepted him, he sent the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, which is now in you, will speak to God and let God know what you need. Okay, you may not... You'll speak in a new language. You may not say, "Dear Lord, I need help with my finances." You may say, "Okay, but that might be His way of letting God know you need help in finances." Okay, learn of Him. Read the Word. Study the Word. Go to school. Some of you are called to go to school, Bible school somewhere. Okay, uh, and and go to school. Learn of Him. Amen. Thank you for listening. And, and, and I hope you're having a beautiful Easter. So let's go ahead and do our, <clears throat> our communion. I hope you have yours ready. I have mine here. Beautiful. I thank God for communion. And let me tell you another thing while you're, while you're preparing. Communion doesn't have to be done the first Sunday every month. Okay? You can do communion any time you would like to. Okay? Of course, you don't want to abuse it and just, you know, be silly with anything, but you can do communion any time you want. Amen? Okay, so as you're preparing, I'm, I'm going over to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And start with verse 26. Matthew 26, 26. And as they were eating, now they're, they're eating for the Passover. This is why you see the Ten Commandments on TV around this time and things like that, because this is the time of the Holy Passover when they put the, watch it, they put the blood of the Lamb over the doors to stop death from killing their firstborn. My God, my God, God is good. The blood of the Lamb at that time, because Jesus hadn't been born yet, okay? So now they're celebrating the Passover. That's the purpose of the Passover, okay? And it says as they were eating. Jesus took the bread and blessed it. So take your cracker, hold it up, okay? The, the emotions that you make are important. Hold it up and break it between your fingers. Always break mine, even if it's small. I break it. He broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. He said, take, eat. This is my body, so let's take and eat ours. Amen. Amen. As I try not to crunch into this phone. All right. And it says in verse 27, And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for, notice he said New Testament, see, New Passover, Passover and Old Testament. Now we have this in the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So take your fruit of the vine, whatever you're using. Okay, take your fruit of the vine and drink. He said, drink ye all of it. Amen. So let's, let us drink. Amen. Give thanks 
for the blood of Jesus. I give thanks for the blood of Jesus. I'll do it every day, like a little kid. We should be like little children to God. You know, little kid, you ever know when a little kid knows their mom and dad or whatever is going to back them up, or mom or father, whichever, is going to back them up. You notice nothing bothers them. They're like, my dad will come. He will take care of this. I'm not scared of you. No, 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 no. This is how we are with God. I love the Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Bless each and every person that came on here today. Father God, we thank you for the word. I thank you for using me, Father. May somebody give their life to Jesus Christ. All the people around the world, even if it's just one, then this today has not been in vain. Thank you for using me, Father God, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. May God give you the peace that passes all understanding. God bless you. Don't eat too much. Have a wonderful Resurrection Sunday. God bless.